Hey everyone! In today's episode, we're going to learn how to use the Corona Light material. We're going to start by selecting the objects we want to apply the Corona Light material. In this example, we're going to select the filaments in the lamps. One recommendation is to use selection sets to quickly select the objects in your scene. After selecting the objects, we need to open the Slate Material Editor by pressing the M button or this icon. We're also going to use the interactive rendering to quickly adjust the settings of the light material. There are a few ways to create a new material, but my favorite, and the one that I recommend using, is by right-clicking the Slate Material screen and go to Materials, Corona, Corona Light Material. After this, assign the material to your selected object. One recommendation is that if you are just starting to add lights to your scene, keep all the default values and adjust them with a combination of light mids and modifying the material. And it's really important to remember that this material is not the main source of lighting, but a detail to the scene. We also need to remember to turn off bloom and glare, as this can affect the look of the light material. Let's change the color to a warm tone. I recommend using the temperature bar to do this but we can also use the standard hue values for special colors. Another option is to use a map to control the color. So let's connect a fall of map to the color slot. We're changing the top color to a light yellow and the bottom one to a warm color. We're keeping all settings as default and changing only the mid curve. Select the bottom point and change it to the sear corner. Then move the helper to the top left corner. We're going to be doing the same with the top point. This is going to create a gradient-like effect with a brighter or a white spot at the center. We're going to do the same for the opacity map, but in this case, white is visible and black not visible. Copy the color map and connect it to the opacity slot, then change the top color to white and the bottom color to black. What we are doing with these two maps is creating a similar effect to real life light, where the interior filament is brighter and the light start to diminish the farther from it. We can see the difference of the effect if we turn the maps on and off. If you're just starting with this type of map, I recommend also creating a dummy object like a cylinder to see more clearly the effect. After the color has been adjusted, Let's change the intensity. Lower values will create a dimmer light and higher values a brighter light. For this scene, a value of two should work well. The next section is light emission. If enabled, the object is going to be a light source for our scene. But if it's disabled, it's going to be self-illuminated, but it's not going to affect the scene lighting. This is an important option as complex shapes or hundreds of objects can increase the time it requires for rendering, or it can even create artifacts. Occlude other lights can help us to turn on or off the shadow casting of the Corona light material. If it's on, the geometry is going to be affected by other lights and cast shadow. This effect is physically accurate and we should try to keep it on. When we are working with plain objects, we can use a mid on both sides to create a lighting or self-illumination effect in the front and back face of the object. Directionality can help us to create a spotlight effect for our lights. Zero has no effect and the light is spread in all directions. 0.5 is going to create a 50% spotlight effect and one is a 100% spotlight effect. We can use this option to create an IES-like effect that is faster to render. We can also exclude or include objects. The selection screen is the same as the one we have in the render select include exclude list. You can see my render selected video where I talk about this option in more detail. As we want this object to be self-illuminated only and not a source of light, let's turn off the emit light option. The last section is visibility. The most common exclusions here are visible directly to exclude the light from the rendering. We're going to be using this option mainly in the Corona light and not the Corona light material. We can also remove the light from the reflection and the refraction. The other exclusions, alpha, masking, and caustics are rarely used. After finishing the light material configuration, 
we're going to turn on the bloom and glare effects to add more realism to the rendering. With the Corona light material, we're able to convert any shape into a light source or self-illuminated material. It can be used for many different objects in our architectural visualization projects like light bulbs, fire, light signs, TV screens, or traffic lights. It is really easy to use with only a few options to control it. And the only thing that we need to be careful is the rendering time or possible artifact issues. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.